Today I want to talk about ThyssenKrupp, the steel conglomerate that's listed in Germany. We've been looking at the company since 2017 when we pointed out that we thought they were using creative accounting to hide their business reality and obscure the fact that the company was doing far worse than people thought. At the time there were plenty of people who disagreed with our thesis, but since then the stock has halved. Before I go on, I must point out that under Hong Kong SFC regulations, we're not allowed to make stock recommendations and none of what I'm about to say should be considered to be investment advice. As usual, we're looking at the company through our lens of governance, accounting and peer performance. Unfortunately, we think ThyssenKrupp falls down on all three. Governance. ThyssenKrupp has one of the world's largest boards. It's a two-tier board stuffed with employee representatives, local council representatives, trustees, as well as management. It's no wonder it's so cumbersome and slow moving. It's very hard to see how the board and its directors are aligned with shareholders. It seems to entrench management's positions even when they destroy shareholder value. And as far as we can see, there's little sign of a turnaround, even at this late stage. Next, accounting risk. ThyssenKrupp has used some of the most creative accounting practices we've ever seen. They recap companies just before writing things off and selling them. They use a conglomerate structure to hide the underperformance of their operating units. And their whole financing costs seem to hide some unusual movements. One of the biggest problems we have, and one of the reasons why we think their profits are actually overinflated, is because at the end of almost every accounting period, they make a provision or a write-off which suggests to us that their depreciation and amortisation policies are far too generous on an operating basis. The recent attempt to form a JV with Tata was yet another example of the company's creative accountants at work. They were trying to come up with a somewhat contorted structure that gave them optionality, allowed them to write up the value of the asset, which it's a steel asset in Europe, it's hard to see how it'd be undervalued, even though parking some of the liabilities almost off balance sheet. Finally, peer performance. Tissen's problem is it just employs too many people. We don't know whether this is because of union representative on the board or just because management is totally inefficient. But we think they need to sack about 35,000 people to get their productivity levels anywhere close to their peers. This is one of the issues we have with Tissen's valuation. Far too many analysts seem to put multiples onto their operating units and ignore head office costs. However, sacking all these people and cutting head office costs are a significant liability and it's only after you adjust for this can you come up with any sensible numbers for the company. Now there's talk of spinning off or IPOing the elevator business and yes we do think this should raise 16 to possibly 20 billion euros. The only problem is when you sell that off, you sell off nearly all of the company's growth and its cash flow. Moreover, even if they do raise the sums that we think are possible from selling the elevator business, we see very little likelihood of that money coming back to shareholders. More likely, it'll be reinvested in the value-destroying core steel business. There's really little upside for shareholders. We've been through some of the key issues, but if you'd like to know more, please visit our website or send us an email. Thank you very much for your time.